Hello everyone. Today I will talk about accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. Let's get it started. Let's suppose you built a robot to answer an alphabet in front of him. Every alphabet the robot will answer and you will fill out below table with his answer. Here the robot answers A for alphabet A. So we put 1 at row A and column A. Here the robot answered D for input B. We put 1 at the row B, column D. And we repeat this step until finishing these steps. Okay, so this table you just made is the confusion matrix. And today we will use this confusion matrix to measure the model performance. Here we have two models and confusion matrix respectively. Let's suppose we must choose only one model to deploy in production. Which model will you choose? Well, well, here you can see the accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. And practically, we are using this performance measure to select one of the model in this example. So to understand the performance measure, we need to understand these concepts first. True positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative here. Well, firstly, well, this true positive is correctly identified prediction for each class. Uh, in the confusion matrix here, you can see the green color cells in this table. They are the true positive. And the true negative is correctly rejected prediction for a certain class. The blue color cells in this example are the true negative for class A. And these blue color cells are the true negative for class D. False positive means incorrectly identified predictions for a certain class. These red cells are false positive for class A, and these red cells are false positive for class B. False negative means incorrectly rejected data for a certain class. Here, orange colored cells are false negative for A, and now we understand true positive, true negative, and the false positive and false negative. We can talk about one of the major here, accuracy. Okay, so the accuracy is calculated as the total number of the correct predictions divided by the total number of data set. So here is the example. We have the, the 9, 15, 24, and 15 as a true positive here. And we are going to divide this one with the total data set. So the accuracy of this confusion matrix is 0.78. So let's get back to our problem here. We have the model 1 and the model 2. And uh, we want to select just one model to deploy in the production. And we can use the accuracy here. Model 1's accuracy is to sum up these green cells here and divide by whole data set here. So the accuracy of the model 1 is 0.8. And how about this model 2? We sum up all the green cells here and divide by whole data set here. So this one's accuracy is 0.725. So the accuracy of model one is higher than model two. So we can select model one in this example. So accuracy works well on balanced data. The balanced data means that we had 10 example for A and the 10 data set for B 10 data set for C and the 10 data set for D. We call it balanced data. But how about the data is imbalanced? Imbalanced means that we have the test data, 200 test data set for A, while the B, C, D only have 10, de 10 data set for each. Uh, in this case, we call it imbalanced data. And the accuracy of the model one is 0.547 while the accuracy of the model 2 is 0.87. So accuracy-wise, model, model 2 should be better than the model 1 because it's a higher value. But let's take a closer look here. So if we take a look at the model 1 here, it's very accurate for the A, class A. So uh, among these 200 examples, this model 2 uh, accurate on the A like 198 were correct here. But how about these B and C and D? 
we had 10 examples here and only one data set was correct for B and only one C was correct for C and only one D was correctly predicted for the data set uh, in a 10 data set example here. So it's a, this model too actually very terrible for the B, C and D only good at A here. But how about the model one? The model one's accuracy is lower than the model two, but you can see B has nine correctly predicted data uh, out of 10 data set and eight uh, correctly predicted data out of 10 data set and the nine correctly predicted data out of 10 data set. So we can say the model one uh, was uh, well predicted for the class B, C, and D. And also A, it's like the half of the data set was correctly predicted. So it's reasonably better model than model two, but the accuracy can mislead this model's performance uh, on the, this uh, imbalanced data. So that means we need another performance measure for imbalanced data. So the F1 score, uh, which I'm going to talk about now, is a good metric when the data is imbalanced. What's the magic in the F1 score is, F1 score consider both sides actually. Given a class, will the classifier will detect it? And that given a class uh, prediction, uh, given a class prediction from the classifier, how likely is it to be correct? So respectively, this line is the recall and uh, this vertical line is the precision precision so f1 score is just uh is just the harmonic mean of the recall and the precision so let's talk about the harmonic mean what is the harmonic mean let's say we have the a here this amount and the b here this amount and uh, we across this line like this and you will get this h and this H is exactly half of the harmonic mean. So let's suppose the A was the precision and the B was the recall. And the H is just here, right? So even if the, the recall is very high, the H is this side. That means the harmonic mean punishes extreme value more. That means if we have the imbalanced data, and if we use the harmonic mean, we can punish the extreme value in the imbalance data and can find the harmonic average there. And this is the way how the F1 score works. So that's the reason why this F1 score works well on the imbalanced data. So F1 score is a harmonic mean and the harmonic mean equation is like the two times uh, precision times recall over the precision plus recall. So to, in order to find the F1 score, we need to know the precision and uh, recall first. How to get the precision of the model? Well, we need a TP, the true positive and the false positive first. So for the class A, the, tr the true positive is 100 and the false positive is this area, which is basically zero. And uh, for class B, the true positive is nine and the false positive is 80 plus 1 plus 1. So false positive here is 82. And uh, for class C, the true positive 8, while the FP is 10 plus 0 plus 0. And uh, for the class D, the true positive is 9, while the false positive is 10 plus 1 plus 1. So now we have the true positive and the false positive here. And the precision equation is this one. TP, true positive, over TP plus FP. So precision of A is 1, precision of B is this, and the precision C, precision D. And uh, I'm going to get the average of the precision using the macro average here. So PA plus PB plus precision C plus uh, precision D over the number of classes. Since we have four classes here, over 4 here. So the precision is 0.492. And we also need a recall value here. For the recall, we need to know the true positive and the false negative. So for class A here, the true positive is A, and the false negative is going to be 80 plus 10 plus 10. And for class B, the true positive is 9, 
but the fourth negative is going to be 0 plus 0 plus 1 and so on. And the recall uh, equation is uh, true positive uh, divided by the TP plus FN and I'm going to get the average recall here just same as what we did for the precision and the, the average recall is 0.775. So we now have the recall and the precision. We can calculate the F1 score here. So F1 score, the equation is here. We got the F1 score of the model one is 0.601. I'm going to skip the model to F1 score calculation, but you can do it for your practice. So here is the result. The F1 score of the model one is 0 0.601, and the F1 score of the model two is 0.342. So F1 score wise, the model 1 is better than the model 2, while the accuracy of the model 1 is lower than the accuracy of the model 2. So on the imbalance data, and if you use the F1 score, you can find that the model 1 is better than the model 2 F1 score perspective. And as you found from this tutorial, the model 1 predicts well on multiple classes classification on imbalance given data and the F1 score is the metric to quantify its performance. So uh, if you are working in the machine learning field and the data analysis, uh, you will eventually face this issue like that you have multiple models like one model is from the KNN and the other model is from the SVM and you will eventually need to select which model should we select for the deployment on your production. Well, if the debate, if the data is balanced, you may just use the accuracy. But if the, the test data was uh, imbalanced, then you probably want to use the F1 score, which consider the recall and the precision and get a harmony mean of this one. And that you will find the better model on the imbalanced data. Okay, this is it for this video. And always thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video.